Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, January 9th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Big news today, of course, Microsoft's patch Tuesday. We got uh, 49 or 51 vulnerabilities patched, depending on how you exactly count them. Only eight of them, I believe, are rated critical. So overall, an average patch Tuesday. One vulnerability was already publicly known, but this time around, no vulnerability is fixed that has already been exploited. Now, there is one vulnerability that sort of sticks out, and that's CVE 2019-547. This is a vulnerability in the Windows 10 or server version 18.03 DHCP client. So interestingly, only the latest, greatest operating system versions are vulnerable. Older versions are not affected. The tricky part here is that this is one of those vulnerabilities you can't really do much about you have to accept DHCP leases in many networks, in particular if you, of course you're connecting to a Wi-Fi network somewhere. So this would be a classic vulnerability to be exploited by a rogue access point, for example. At this point, we don't really know much about this vulnerability other than what Microsoft told us. And well, uh, one of the items Microsoft noted is that it shouldn't be all that difficult to write an exploit for this and that exploitation is likely for this vulnerability. So this one vulnerability should certainly be sort of at the top of your patch priority list. Now, another big issue is CV 2019-586. Uh, this vulnerability affects Microsoft Exchange and it does allow an attacker to take control of an Exchange server just by sending a specially crafted email. And well, that's what you have Exchange for in order to receive and send email. So uh, this is another one. If you're running Exchange, make sure you apply this one uh, quickly. Now, Microsoft is only rating this particular vulnerability as important. Not exactly sure why Microsoft considers that important instead of critical. Uh, don't really see any user interactions so required here. But again, we don't have an exploit. We don't have a lot of detail yet aside from what's in Microsoft's bulletin. Then there are also a number of vulnerabilities in the JET database engine. One of them, a remote code execution vulnerability. That's the one that was already been made public. Now, you may not be familiar with this JET database engine. It's sort of an offshoot a little bit of Microsoft Access. It is included in Office, I believe, and other Microsoft products. So it's one of those behind the scene things that you may not necessarily notice that you actually are using it and have it in stalled. And as far as sort of unexpected updates go, there's an update for Skype for Android. Remember, there was this lock screen bypass that used Skype. Well, Skype is a Microsoft product, so Skype released an update that should fix this lock screen bypass via Skype. And of course, we also got updates from Adobe. No update for PDF Reader, no security update for Flash Player. There was an update for Adobe Flash Player today, but it's not a security update. Instead, we only got updates from Adobe for Adobe Digital Editions and Adobe Connect. Well, yesterday I talked about adware in Apple's App Store. Today it's Google's turn and the Google Play Store. According to Trend Micro, there were 85 different games, TV and remote control simulator apps that were in the Google Play Store that were, well, a slightly disguised adware. In this case, the adware actually was running in the background and then displaying full screen ads when the phone was unlocked. Google has now removed the apps from the Google Play Store. However, of course, if you still have them installed on your system, you may want to take a look at your apps and see if they're on this list in particular, if you have seen some sort of annoying full screen ads. Now, these are not these ads that you sometimes run into on websites. Some websites I've seen appear to use some less reputable ad networks that do display these full screen ads you really can't close and you have to leave the website in order to actually close that particular window. 
And Coinbase observed a double spend in the Ethereum Classic blockchain now. And this requires, of course, a 51% attack where a particular attacker does have more than 51% of the total blockchain mining capacity. Apparently, that enabled them to, in this case, spend about $1 million worth of Ethereum Classic twice. And of course, in some cases, also disrupt the blockchain. And if you're interested in all the nitty gritty details, Coinbase has a great blog that explains what exactly happened and how the attack worked in this case. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.